This is a video for how to go about calculating force vectors in Google Sheets for your Principles of Engineering class. You will notice over on the right hand side of the screen we have an example of a problem where we have this kind of eyelet hook here that has two forces acting on it in angled directions. So we can see this one that's at 60 degrees at 300 pounds you know, coming up in this direction and we have one over here that's 30 degrees from this x-axis and is going at this direction at you know, 400 pounds. And what we need to find is we need to find what the direction for each of these is pulling in both the X and the Y direction. And that's going to be us calculating, you know, total vectors. And we're going to come into resultant vectors and magnitude of magnitude of vectors and all kinds of functions we're going to do. But what's nice is you can do these in Google Sheets as opposed to doing those, let's say, on a scientific calculator. A scientific calculator is perfectly fine, but if by chance you want to pull up a Google Sheet or an Excel spreadsheet and, and work these through, um, it'll help. And we even do some things towards the end just to show you how things can kind of calculate themselves as we go. So we're going to have to do a little bit of trig here and we're going to research, um, kind of reference the Sokotoa you see up here, you know, sine opposite over hypotenuse, cosine adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent opposite over adjacent. So in order to find the x direction, we're going to start with C up here. In order for us to go in the x direction, we're going to be using cosine in this case. So in, when we're going to the right in this area, this right here where my mouse is, we're going to be using cosine. And notice that in order for us to start out doing this, we're going to need to have our pounds and our angle placed, you know, in cells up above here. So, you know, I've in the info section of this video, I've shared a link to where you can copy and follow along with me. And I've already placed the 300 and the 60 in here. So we're going to go ahead and start writing some functions to do some trig in Google Sheets. So we're going to start out by hitting equals and we're going to tap on the pounds, which is 300 pounds. And we're going to say times. And we're going to start typing out cosine. And if you type COS, you'll see cosine of an angle provided in radians. Now, one thing you'll need to do to make all this make sense is you need to start typing the word radians after you see the parentheses. And when we click radians, we're going to come up and we're going to click on our angle number, which is B11. And we're going to close parentheses twice and we're going to hit enter. And that is going to give us 150 pounds. Now, right underneath it, it's going to kind of start saying, do you want to autofill this? And I would prefer not to. So we're going to go ahead and just say X there. We're going to X out. Now for the Y direction, we're going to be using sine. So we'll be using opposite over hypotenuse. So for sine, we're going to come down to our CY in this case, and we're going to hit equals. So and we're going to tap on our 300 again and we will say time. So we're going to start typing out sine. You'll see sine of an angle provided in radians. We need to start typing out radians again, and we will click. We will then tap on our angle. We are going to close parentheses twice. We will now see 259.8. Now, notice that the autofill did not give us that answer. That's why you don't always want to trust autofill with everything you're doing. We have 259.8. So what that means, after going in and looking at, you know, 300 pounds pulling this way, well, that's actually pulling up at a greater magnitude than it is pulling to the right, and that's because this angle is at 60 up above it. You know, you can, you can tell how this would be pulling more up than it is over to the right, and that's why we see these magnitude total amounts of pounds as far as the vector is concerned. Now, for 30 degrees down here and 400, we have 400 and we have 30 right here in this area here. Now, for d sub x in this direction, we will be using cosine. So we're going to go ahead and hit e and we will be tapping on B18 right here, 400 pounds, times, and we're going to hit COS for cosine. Click cosine, start typing out radians again, and we are going to click, and our angle is the number, uh, the cell B19, and we're going to go ahead and close parentheses twice. Now, we're going to go ahead and not, don't take the autofill from that, and we'll scroll back up, and we'll see that, you know, I'm going to drag this to the side. Now, I went ahead and left the other vectors in a positive direction because we were going to the right and we were going up. Now in this case, we're going to the right and we're going down in this case. So this D sub Y that you see right here, since it's pulling in a down direction, it will be negative. So as you can see here, we're going to write ourselves one small difference in how we write the function here because we're dealing with the negative. And we're going to hit equals and we're going to go ahead and tap on our 400 and we're going to say times, and we're going to start parentheses, and we're going to say sine in this case, and we're going to go to sine, we're going to start typing out radians, we're going to click, and then automatically we're going to come up to our angle of B19. Now I want to close parentheses twice and say times negative 1, because I want this to go ahead and be a negative number for me, and I'm going to go ahead and hit enter, and we get ourselves a negative 200 pounds. So we've gone through and we've calculated out, you know, through these functions, 
you know, how everything moves in you know, X and a Y direction for each one of these, because we have to separate these together. Now, for resultant vectors, we really just have to add up our Ys and add up our Xs. So I'm going to hit equals, and I'm going to tap on CY, and I'm going to hit plus, and I'm going to tap on the negative 200. I'm going to hit enter. Notice we're only getting 59.8, and that's because these can kind of offset each other with the different directions that they're going. For X, we'll have a much larger number. So we're going to say 150. We'll say plus. We're going to go to 300. And, oh, excuse me. I tapped the wrong thing. For X here, we're going to hit equals. Hit equals first. I got to tap on the 150. Hit plus, and I'm going to tap on the 346 and hit enter. So you can tell that you know this is 700 pounds of force, and you know the total amount of you know force that's acting when you add all of them up and you're trying to give your resultant vectors. This right here is what is the resultant out of all of that after some things might be able to cancel out. So now, for your magnitude of vectors, what we have to do is we have to take these numbers and square them, add them together, and find the square root. So we're going to go ahead and say equals, so and we're going to go SQRT, and we're going to click on square root. And we're going to add another parenthesis because we have to do some other math here. And we're going to tap on E13, which is this number right there, and hit Shift 6. And this is the exponential value. We're going to square that. And I'm going to close my parentheses, and I'm going to say plus. I'm going to start another parentheses. I'm going to tap on E15. I'm going to go Shift 6. I'm going to put a 2 for exponent. Remember, if you're cubing this, you would put in a 3 or something like that. And we're going to go ahead and hit Enter, and you're going to see 500. That's the magnitude of both of those vectors added together. That's 500 pounds. So now down at the bottom, we need to find out at what angle is this totally being pulled. So for the angle, we got a couple things that we're going to go about doing. We have to do some, uh, some, just some math. I want you to notice that for this video, I'm not going in and showing you how, exactly how to do all these things. I'm not using necessarily a fully free body diagram. The point of this is for us to understand how to do this in Google Sheets as opposed to use a graphic calculator. I encourage you to take a greater look and more in depth of, of for resultant vectors and for angles as well. So in this case, I just want to, I like to divide these up instead of, you know, writing some massively long amount of functions. So we're just going to hit equals here. And we're going to start out and we have to tap on our 59.8, which is E13, and divide it by E15. And I just want to get just kind of that small, you know, little amount. And for this case, we have to, we're trying to find the tangent in this case. And we have to use the inverse tangent function in Google Sheets. In order to do that, we're going to hit equals and we're going to type degrees. And you're going to click on degrees and you're going to start typing, start typing out A-T-A-N, which is the inverse tangent of a value. We're going to go ahead, and after you have that parentheses, you're going to tap on um, E23, which is the number right up above it. We're going to close parentheses twice, and we're going to hit enter. And the degree that this is pulling is right around 7 degrees. You know, we can say that, you know, we're really, really dividing this up. And if I can say, you know what, I really just want to round up this number to 7, I can hit equals, and I can type, start typing in round up. I'm going to click on round up. I'm going to tap on the number up above it. I'm going to close parentheses, and I'm going to hit enter. That's going to round us up to 7 degrees. And I can say all in all, you are at a seven degree angle with a total amount of force acting on it of 500 pounds. So within Google Sheets, this is how we can go about doing these calculations in Google Sheets. So if by chance, let's just say, you know what, actually that angle up here is at a 62 degree angle. I can hit enter and it's automatically going to switch all this for me. Note that sometimes the sine and cosine can change based upon where the angle is and also where the force is. So please be sure to kind of have an idea of where you're going before you go in and tackle something like this. You know, just for fun here, this is 400 pounds. We can say, actually, you know, that's 425. I can hit enter and everything's going to automatically adjust for me over here. This is a good way to go in and learn how to do some vector calculations and also learn how to use spreadsheets at the same time. So this has been a video for how to go about calculating force vectors in Google Sheets for your Principles of Engineering class.